another clip uh, a couple of years back. So this guy that was driving Kruger with his own vehicle came across a pride of lions. They just took down a zebra. They were busy eating on the zebra. That's what he could have done was roll down his window, take the photo, and then drove away. This guy got out of his car and went around his car and actually tried to take a photo. I mean, it's like me. If I'm eating a cheeseburger and you come close to me, you're going to have trouble in your hands. I can guarantee you that because I love my cheeseburgers. <laughs> maybe they first wanted a selfie. No, you never know. <laughs> and uh, of course, they didn't sew it on the clip, but the subtitles actually say they ripped this guy apart. So it's, I think it's, it's, it's sad because these animals do what they naturally do. I mean, this guy, this animal wants to defend his food and he thought that this guy's going to take away his food. Simple as that. That's the thing with wildlife. We're in their territory. We actually have to respect them in their territory. Jazakallah here about Prophet Muhammad Wasallam and all of the other prophets, they were all shepherds. Yeah. And they were all basically, I'm not sure, but Prophet Muhammad was, was brought up away from the city. And uh, is there any significance of that? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. It's amazing that you raise the issue of the prophets being all being trained with sheep at some stage. The hadith says, Ma min nabiyin illa wa ra al ghanam. There has not been a messenger that we've sent, a prophet that we've sent, except that they have been shepherds at some stage of their lives. This was perhaps the training of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to animals, we have to be very patient. If you watch a shepherd, the shepherd has to leave with the sheep. The sheep cannot speak the language at all. There is only an understanding. You have to be kind to the sheep. You have to understand if one sheep is sickly, that shepherd is not going to rest. He's going to ensure that he looks after the entire flock. To get them to move together is a whole mission. So for many years, these prophets, including Moses and Ibrahim alayhi salam, uh, or uh, uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, all of them, they had dealt with sheep or with a flock uh, of animals at a time. And one of the, the purposes is to train them. When they were then sent or told to go to the human beings, the mission is much easier. Although the human beings attack sometimes, and although they've committed or perpetrated much more in terms of harm, but the training was already there. And this is just one of the purposes. It actually softens you. It actually makes you a person who's very compassionate. If you have a feeling towards animals, your feeling towards human beings should be far greater. This is why in Islam, as much as we do believe in kindness to animals, we also believe that man deserves priority in the case of desperation. For example, there are dogs dying and there are human beings dying. And for, let's say there's a flood. We are taught as Muslims that both of those are important, but we start off with the human beings. Mm -hmm. Some people think that Islam doesn't give importance to the dogs. Leave them, let them die. No. We, we give importance to both, but where do we start? You know, you have a baby crying, screaming. You go to the human being first, the baby. And once you complete it with them, then you go to the animal. So the same applies to donations. People want to donate. It is more important to donate to people who are dying of hunger than to donate to animals that are dying of hunger, although they are both very important. But we prioritize. And this is why perhaps if you have donations that are voluntary, you, you may want to give a certain percentage that is larger to human beings and a little percentage to the animals, perhaps. So it is kindness towards the animals. This is part and parcel of that particular training of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, when it comes to uh, the upbringing initially of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, there was a norm in the Arabian Peninsula whereby they would go out or they would send their little children to suckle uh, with uh, foster mothers uh, at a distance from the hustle and the bustle of the city because they needed to breathe the fresh air, they needed to grow up with beautiful food, a good surrounding with the animals, they needed to learn how to speak without the slang and all the dirty behavior of the cities. This is one of the reasons why, and it's quite clear, it's mentioned in the hadith as well, the reasons why they used to be sent out. So Muhammad وسلم, was brought up in Badia to Bani Sa'd by a lady known as Halima to Sa'diyah. Uh, she was the foster mother of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and she taught him how to speak initially, meaning you know the few words with the others, how to grow up with the rest of the children to be able to appreciate them. Uh, they would drink beautiful water. They would go out and get the water, come back. All the sacrifice was part and parcel of the upbringing at that particular time. These are just some beautiful, beneficial points connected to what you've asked, and I hope we've all benefited from this.